I do my best designs when I focus. But sketching digitally can come with a lot of distractions. I finally figured out a great way to sketch distraction free on the iPad and it got me in the zone. Watch this before you even make one more sketch. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. This is Goose, uh, she's up there, and I'm Kevo Scott, designer and project manager, and on this channel, we explore the strategies and tools that help us to design using mobile tech, and especially the iPad. I have been so concerned lately with being able to do work that is focused, especially when I'm sketching. So I started doing things like making all my sketches in one file for project, so I don't lose focus going in and out of files. I started using copy and paste instead of export and import, so I don't lose focus while opening and closing files. But there was one huge distraction that was still killing me, layer management. Okay, I know I could just draw on one layer and not worry about it, but there are some real advantages to using layers and I wanted to figure out how I could use layers to keep my sketches organized and ready to use, share, and reference for the next steps in the project. And one thing I really like to do when I sketch digitally is block in elements with a pen, pencil, or marker that is fat and light. It just helps me to, to just establish the scale and construction and proportions before diving in to sketching details. And the annoying thing is that keeping this on a separate layer can require a lot of attention, especially if you're going back and forth. Well, that is not necessarily so in concepts because it has a feature that's called automatic sorting layers. So what does this do? Now you can see if I just go ahead and I draw, here I have the pencil and it's on the pen layer. So when it's set to manual, it, it just it just doesn't matter. Like, you know, I could use any pen and it's just gonna be on whatever layer that I happen to have it set to, right? If I switch this to automatic, it does something different. Now, if I grab a marker, it creates a layer called marker. And if I draw with it, it's going to be on that layer unless I switch it back to manual. So, and then when I go to pen, it's going to switch it to a pen layer. Pencil, it's going to switch it to a pencil layer. Important to note that there's two ways that I can turn off this automatic. I can press it again and it'll go back to manual, or if I just, you know, I, I override the layer and I go to marker, it'll automatically switch it to manual, even though I have the pencil selected. So once it's on automatic, it'll uh, be according to the pen that I'm using, and that's very important. I use a different kind of pen, like fountain or dynamic pen, it also adds that to the pen layer, right? If I use another type of pencil, it's also gonna add it to that pencil layer, and that's how the defaults are set up. So I figured, well, I can just you know use a marker to do my blocking in. The problem is, is when I do that, well, when I draw a vertical, I get these skinny lines, and I don't want that. I don't like that for blocking in my drawing and making construction lines. So I thought, well, what if I could just go in and make the settings of this marker more like a pen? So I tapped on it, and you know, double tapped it so that I could get into the settings and I'm going through and I'm messing around with these things. And then I noticed down here, auto layering says assign to a layer called marker. Hmm. Well, I know that I can create custom pens. So can I go into the custom pens and then advanced settings? Oh, all right. Yeah. Now we're onto something, right? So I went down here and I created a new pen and I went into it and then I came down here to the bottom. There it is, auto layering, and I can actually just call that, instead of marker, I can just call that blocking or construction or you know something according to the system that I want to use, and then I can also name the pen that, and I can set up the pen however I want. Just do this with the default pens as well if that's, if that's what you want to do, and just give them your own layer names, you know, so you could change dynamic pen to be, be put on a layer called dynamic pen. What I want to do is just set up the pen the way, exactly the way that I wanted it, which for this kind of blocking pen was with a low opacity and a larger size. And I want it to be this reveal rather than the stamp type. And ultimately what I did is I, you know, I set up my whole range of si sizes under my presets rather than just switching one, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to uh, show you by making it a little bit bigger. And okay, now that I'm back in the drawing, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select that pen. And when I turn on 
automatic, it automatically creates this layer called blocking. And then I can just go ahead and block in what I want. I'm just gonna do a quick you know, box for the sake of time here, whatever. And I can even you know, turn the opacity down on that. And this is just my construction geometry, right? So you know, I'm laying this out. Oh yeah, it's like these, these blocks with this ISO view. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this is when you can kind of get really into it like super fast and loose and start, you know, doing some things with relationships and, you know, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, here we go. Here's the center of that rectangle. Oh, this can come down like this, you know, and start doing some of that without like really having any sort of commitment, just sort of figuring out the proportions. And it's really light so you don't have to, you know, worry about things feeling too, you know, dialed in or that you just can't sketch over it, right? So once you have this kind of construction geometry, you want to come back in with a with something that's you know more opaque and final. And I you know I like to come in with something that's a little bit finer detail. So I want to create another pen that's called Sketch Fine. And to do that, I'm just going to you know, select one of these other pens on the wheel, so I don't have to change it later. I already made one here, but I'm just going to show you again what I did. Untitled is how it automatically comes in. I'm going to call it sketch find for the pen. Now this isn't going to affect my layer. I need to remember I need to go back down here all the way to the bottom under auto layering and I need to give this a name of what I want that to be. And I like for my pen names to match my layer name. Okay so now that I'm on this pen and that's actually uh, okay that's a little too heavy for fine I feel like but you know just whatever your style is whatever your taste and you can kind of once you have these pens set up you know if if it's if they're turned on when you open a drawing they'll be on um, if they're on from your last drawing so you can even just set up a set up a basic drawing that you know you know you want as your as your template and that makes it really easy and now I can just come in with these lines you know giving these some sort of scribble just to so everybody knows that this is a sketch, right? And this is really great. And I can start adding in, adding in these kind of details. Everything, everything's like this. You see when I do this slice tool that's actually taking out the geometry so it's not adding a layer I don't know if I made this let's try a mask it's gonna create, put it on a layer called mask no it doesn't that's interesting because that actually is creating lines okay so uh, the next thing let's take a look at um, but the final one and that it, I'm just gonna tap on this pencil that way I don't have to, I could tap on the same brush, but then I have to go back and I have to fix the wheel and I don't want to do that. So now I'm going to go down here again and I'm going to create a new pen and call this one outline because that's how I'm going to use this brush. You can really, you know, start to build whatever system you want. And this could be, this could be for, you know, um, markers that to add color, it could be for really any kind of brush and you can, I'm going to call this outline and I want it to be opaque but I just want it to be you know quite a bit heavier than my sketch line so that it looks appropriate so on size I'm just gonna I mean this already looks pretty good once I start drawing I can change it to uh, see now it creates a layer called outline now the cool thing about no that's not what I want to do so I can just go ahead and create a contour here around this but now when I go back to pick my sketch pen, see that layer jumps up back to sketch fine. You see how nice that is? And then when I do my contour over here, it goes on to outline. And then when I want to go to block things in, it jumps back to blocking. So this is just so nice because now I don't I can just draw and I don't have to think about this stuff. I can just change my pens. Now I do wish, you know, I could have some other s kind of symbol here 
so that I can keep these straight because really the only thing that I have to guide me once I have these up here is just the fact, you know, the color, the opacity, and really the most, most importantly is the size. And I would like to have a little bit more than that because it's easy to forget which is which. So concepts developers, if you're listening, if I could maybe, you know, borrow some other symbols or have some custom ones available, that would be great. So this is great, but I don't want to keep it on these layers forever. Ultimately, I'm going to want a different system, and I'm going to want to be able to save these out, you know, maybe by different objects or different or or different elements of my drawing, right? I might have something that I want as to pick out as, um, you know, maybe I, I want this on a, on a layer that's called platforms instead. So, so I'm going to come in, and I'm going to make my selection. Now, when I go to la add layers at the end, when I go to new layer, that adds everything that I have selected to that layer. So I'm gonna, obviously I'm gonna turn off this blocking layer. And that's why this is so helpful. And then I can just come in and I can make my selection. And then I can, new layer, that's on my new layer. And I can call this whatever I want, platform, whatever it is, right? So the great thing about this is that now what I like to do is I like to make sure I have my keyboard set up. I'm not so much in drawing mode, I'm more in management mode, and this is a separate process. And that allows me to quickly come in and name these layers appropriately, and also just do any kind of tweaking with um, manual entry of line weights and opacities, because it's just a lot faster to type those in than what it is to sit there and, and tap around while I'm trying to come up with ideas, while I'm trying to design while I just want to be focused on drawing. The thing is, no matter how much you optimize the app for sketching, you are not going to be able to focus if you have other apps and notifications interrupting you all the time. Check out this video as soon as it's ready on how to set up focus modes uh, feature in iPad OS 15 so that you can not focus on all the notifications and little buzzers and dings and things coming on your iPad. No, you can just finally focus on design.